<laughs> the Great Gatsby. New movie, right? So stoked. Same guy who made uh, the Romeo and Juliet movie that was really weird because he had guns and whatever. And then he also made that like Moulin Rouge or whatever. And that one is kind of weird. So it's going to be good, right? Eh. I mean, oh, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's still a good movie, but is it everything you were hoping for? Maybe. It all depends on how you look at it. So I'm going to quick go over the how I feel about the book. The book is like awesome. Fitzgerald is, it's probably one of the best books ever written. It's, I don't know. When I read it, I just couldn't really stop reading it. It was really good. And, um, you know, there's not much like intense action. Just the dialogue between the characters and the like, tensions between two. It's a love story, and I really like it. And that's kind of dumb, but I do like it. As for the movie, well, okay, I'm just going to break it down for you. There are really three kind of parts of this movie, two or three, kind of depends how you look at it. I think there's three, and there's the beginning, the middle, and the end. And the middle uh, section is kind of like a lot shorter than the beginning and the end because, well, you'll see. <sighs> Basically, the beginning, uh, first hour, I really I didn't enjoy it. Um, they mix in a lot of like dubstep with Roaring Twenties music. For example, there's one scene where there, you know, the jazz band is playing, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, jazz band!" But then later on, uh, dubstep starts playing, and they start like grinding. And I'm like, when the when the dubstep started playing, I thought someone's phone was going off. That's kind of sad. I was like, oh, hey, I can't stop. Hey, turn off your phone. Oh, dang it. And it was part of the movie. Like, uh, I don't know. It went a little something like, like this. Hey, maestro. All right. Oh God, what's happening? No, 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 I don't know. It was, it was weird. But that's just the first half. So let's talk about the cast a little bit. Jesus McJesus uh, plays Gatsby. So Leonardo DiCaprio just kills it. You know, like he does in every single role ever. And I would bet that, you know, that whole clock scene... Oh, dang it. I can't talk about that. Well, there's a scene in there. And if any of you have seen Django Unchained, um, there's a part in it where he smashes his fist down with a glass cup and it cuts his hand. That was all improv, and the blood was all real and stuff, but they never stopped rolling the camera, and he like smears it all over this girl's face, and that's phenomenal acting. And there's a scene in Great Gatsby where I would guess that something similar happened. Um, maybe it was scripted, but he kind of took it a little farther. You'll know it when you see it. Crybaby McSpider-Man plays uh, Nick Carraway, and you know, he's... He kind of does a good job playing Nick, because Nick is kind of like tasteless in the movie, or in the book. And by tasteless, I don't mean like, oh, that uniform is so last year. <laughs> I mean like, he's more like, doesn't really have a personality. He does. He's basically Nick Third Wheel Caraway. And yeah, they basically nail that one on the head in the movie. 
And my favorite character of all of them, uh, I don't know the guy who plays Tom Buchanan, but oh man, Tom Buchanan is exactly the way I pictured him to be uh, in the book, in the movie. He's like, eh, look at here, see? Old money, huh? <laughs> and yeah, and it's really good. Um, only problems with the characters, George Wilson is a little meaty for George Wilson. If you read the book, George Wilson's like this really small guy, and he's, you know, like, oh, whatever you say, Myrtle, <laughs> and except at the end, he's like, no, Myrtle, you're gonna stay with me, and then Myrtle runs away, um, and then, in this one, he's like, oh, Myrtle, Ah, uh, you're so much stronger than me, but not really, because kind of, I kind of have muscles. I mean, he wears a wife beater and stuff, and he looks kind of broken, but not as much as he could have. I don't know. I'm a little picky, and so this is really just a picky man's qualms with the movie. Uh, my other quandary is that uh, Jordan isn't really <laughs> that big of a character in the movie as she is in the book. They kind of have a thing in the book, you know, Nick and... Jordan kind of, but in this one, I don't know, after like maybe the first half an hour, she does, she's kind of just there, she doesn't even really talk that much, she's just there, I don't know, but the first half of the movie with the dubstep, um, well the first third I guess, the movie doesn't know what it is, it's mixing the flapper, it's mixing the dubstep, it's a big mess, uh, to me anyways. <laughs> And then the middle is kind of a transition between the two, where it kind of knows what it's doing, and it kind of doesn't. Um, but then the last bit, the last like hour, whew, it's really good. Uh, it's really good. The tensions rise in the book, and they rise just as high in the movie as well. And it's actually quite well done. It's pretty good. There, the end, you know, it didn't have that weird, I can't remember the name of the director. I should have looked it up before. I mean, whatever, I'm lazy. The director for the second half of the movie didn't really put in any of his weird artistic thoughts into this one in the beginning, because it's really weird at some parts. They skip over some of the more fun parts uh, in the book and just slap on some big grandiose like party scene, which are cool and stuff, but I don't know. I really like the book, and so I was really looking forward to a couple parts in the movie, but they never happened, and so I was kind of just sitting there like... I am disappointed. But other than that, it's a really good movie. Um, that second half is definitely worth sitting through the first little bit for. Uh, and if you like dubstep 1920s flapper music mix, that, go for it, I guess. Me, personally, I would give the movie, like, I don't know, probably an 8 out of 10. Um, just because that beginning part is a little too abstract for me, and it's kind of weird compared to the book. But that last half just really picks it up. And yeah. So, that's my review. I would say go see it in theaters. Because why not? Alright. Bye-bye. Oh, thank God.